So now let's start to work on her scarf. I'm going to bring back in the concept art and we can have a look at the scarf and just determine what shape it is and just sort of refresh our memories about what we need to create. You can see that we've got a shape around her neck and it's basically a cylindrical shape and then as the scarf goes down in the back it forms the sort of flowing element and it's really a design element that helps support her pose and it fills in this, this sort of negative space here. There are a couple of different ways we can approach this. We can build one long piece of material and then wrap it around her neck or we could do uh, we could break the geometry out into two different sections one section around her neck and then one section for these elements as they come down in the back for the scope of this project and because we don't really have to have this geometry connected between the neck piece and the parts that come down in the back we're going to use the second approach where we create this cylindrical shape around her neck and then this these shapes in the back and we can tuck these shapes in the back into the, the back of this neck piece should we want to, should we have a shot from the back. But we don't need to build any extra geometry than we need. And we don't need to make uh, the project any more complicated than we need it to be. Initially, we're going to have the cylindrical shape. We're going to create it straight. And then we're going to manipulate that just sort of push and pull these points around to create more of an organic form. Okay, we're going to pay attention to how gravity might treat this material. So as it wraps around her neck, it's believable. And you can see that it'll be asymmetrical. That's the general idea. Create this shape first, and then we'll work on the supporting elements of the, the, the scarf as it goes down in the back. On a new mesh layer, let's start to create a cylinder. We're just going to draw this out using our multiple viewports. Make sure that that cylinder is oriented on the Y and then let's just roughly position this. Again using multiple viewports. And I have my reference off to the side and that's a good idea to just have that handy. Then I'll hit the Y key and then just create that initial angle. Now the hair is going to get in the way so I'm just going to hide that temporarily. Now I need more geometry across that section. Alt C for the loop slice tool and we're going to cut this up in a mode of uniform with say like five different uniform sections. Now, I want to pull some of these edges out. So I'll double click on those edges. I go to my push tool and then right click and then just push those out. The initial part of this is just to get the volume right. I'm going to do the same with the push tool there. Something like that. This is a pretty good start. We have an established hill and valley section. Now we want to make this a little bit more organic. Again, thinking about gravity and how that material would sit on her shoulders and be affected by gravity. Sort of pull this down. So this part is just doing some general shaping. Taking that very rigid primitive and making it much more organic and making it look like that material. I find the sculpting tools are a really great way to do that. Maybe I want to pull this down a little bit further. And this is a really subjective part of the project. So push and pull on that. As long as it's believable to you, that's the goal.
Okay, so that's a pretty good start right there. Where the creases come together, or you know, this valley, we can pull that geometry in a little bit closer. See how that valley is getting a little smaller? The geometry is coming in a little bit further. That's going to tighten up things nicely for us to create a nice crease. So when you hit, hit tab, you can see that we've got a pretty good start. Okay, so can sort of continue to push and pull a little bit on this initial sculpting pass to tighten things up. Alright, so I'm fairly happy with that. And I'm going to hide my background elements temporarily. I don't need those polygons. Let's see, at the top or at the bottom. Let's see, there we go. Going to delete that. And I'm going to delete that. I want to bring back my background elements. Now I want to create a little bit of thickness to this material. Not a lot, but just a little bit. So I can do that with a thicken tool, or sometimes I'll do this. I'll select the geometry I want to thicken. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it in the same layer. With it still selected, I'm going to run the push tool, and then right click, and grab that little arrow, and just pull it in slightly. So you can see that we've got a little bit of a thickness there. I want to flip the polygons that I moved in. Hit the F key and that flips the polygons because I want to be these polygons to be out facing on the inside and I want them to be out facing on the outside. Now we can connect the geometry back together. Select those top two edges and then run the bridge tool. Click in the viewport. And let me just hide my background elements for a minute select those d bottom edges, make sure that you've got just those two bottom edges selected and then again run the bridge tool. Okay, so now that we've got a little bit of thickness to it it's starting to come together I want to create a little bit more polish or a little bit more of a finished edge around the top and on the bottom kind of like a seam. And so I want to run a loop slice around each of those sections. Alt C this time we're going to go with a free mode of maybe a count of two and then just click and let's establish one seam first say about like that then I can grab a little arrow pull that in something about like that I'm going to do the same with the bottom I'm going to grab the edge that's on the inside of that and the edge that's on the inside here. I'm going to push those out a little bit. So the push tool and right click and just drag that arrow out just slightly so you can see you've got a little bit of a bevel there, a little bit of an edge. So when you hit tab you can see now that there's just a little hint of a finished edge. Okay, So that's a little bit of polish that we can do at this point and I think that looks pretty good. Alright, so let's bring back my background elements. Let's look at the reference drawing again, the concept art. You can see that it looks a lot tighter around her neck here than it does here. So we can scale that in, but just use your best judgment. For here, well, let me just bring back her hair so we can have a, a better look. Just pull back a little bit. Okay. So we may, may, we may want to scale this in or to, again, just use the sculpting tools to sort of move that in just a little bit more. Just sort of tailor it to what the model looks like in the 3D view. And I'm okay with it being a little bit bigger. Okay, it's going to have a nice, it's going to have, it's going to capture a lot of light, going to collect a lot of um, shadow rather in here sort of like that but you can tailor that as you like I think for the most part I'm, I'm pretty pleased with with the shape 
may want to bring the edge of, of that collar up just a little bit. But in terms of initial shaping, I think we're there. And then once we get to the posing later on in the project, we can still tweak the shape of the, um, of the neck piece just that it works for us. Okay, so I think that's a pretty good place to start or to, to, to stop with the neck. And then now let's work on the supporting elements, which are these pieces that are going to come down in the back. All right, so let's continue the work on her scarf. I'm going to bring the concept art back in for us to have another look at. So we're going to create these areas in the back that uh, sort of come down and swoop around. They have some nice movement here in the drawing. So, But we, what we want to do is rather than create the geometry that's already curved like that, it's a better practice to create it straight. And then later on when we go to posing, we'll have a lot more flexibility to do some sort of exploration in terms of curving these around, you know, creating some movement like this. In addition to the flexibility that we have with posing, we also want to th sort of think ahead in terms of how we're going to texture this geometry. When we go to create UVs, it's a much, we get much better results for a geometry that's in more of a neutral position, that being straight, versus something that's being curved. We need to sort of plan that stuff out ahead of time just to save us some work when we go to UVing or texturing or posing. So on a new mesh layer, let's create a basic shape and we're just going to draw this out about the length what we might need and this is based off of let's say like the width of this is based off basically the width that we've already done for the neck we have some divisions here along the length and we also want to create some divisions along the width let me create a little bit of thickness to that material first. Maybe a little bit thicker. So now I want to create maybe some container edges to help hold the edge of the, the shape of the, the scarf. So we'll do that with a loop slice. Mode set to symmetry in a count of two. Let's just click and drag in the viewport and sort of bring those edges out to about there. Okay, and just like that we did with the the neck where we created this sort of little bit of a, um, a seam area just to help finish off the edge. We're, we've done that. We'll do that here with the uh, the other part of the scarf. All right, so let's do that again. So two polygons in the direction that we want to slice and Alt C create something like that. Okay, so let's grab those two edges, double clicking on those, and let's run the push tool. So right click, and then let's just pull that out slightly. Just get a good vantage point so we can see how far we're going to pull that out. You can see that it just creates a little bit of thickness so that when we subdivide or, or hit tab, we have a little bit of a bump there. Okay, just slightly. But we do need a little bit more geometry in here. So again, Alt-C, and just sort of divide this up. So that's a pretty good neutral position for, our, the, for that part of the scarf. Let's tighten up the end. So Alt-C, this time in a free mode with a count of one. And then just come down and then we'll do the same at the top. Not completely necessary to do it at the top, but that's alright. Just to be complete. Okay, so when we hit tab, we subdivide that like that, we can see that we've got a good clean start to that. And it's in, and again, it's in a neutral position so that when we go to we get to the UV section, it's going to give us much better results. Let's go ahead and then move this into um, a better position. We'll just put it right back here in the back 
just kind of out of the way. Now we will create another one just so that we'll have two of these strands coming back here. But we're once this is UV'd, we'll copy and paste that so that we'll have two complete copies of this back part of the scarf. But they'll be copies of each other in terms of geometry and also UVs. So that sort of completes the scarf. And we're ready to move on to the next part of the project.